Should we get into Chris Rufo? And uh, also... yeah, man. I mean, this is an interesting one. I mean, um, you have to remind me and the uh, the listeners who this guy is, Chris Rufo. So Chris Rufo is basically the he's a it was a Hudson Institute um, guy, um, journalist sort of fellow, and he is the leader in the fight against critical race theory. Um, it used to be like a guy named James Lindsay, but James Lindsay is too like kind of explicit with some of the problematic views that he has. So this is the professional one that gets invited everywhere, and he's the expert on critical race theory. Um, just a, a sort of a f- refresher on what critical race theory is. Um, we did a discussion with Andrew Hartman mm-hmm. uh, for pr- uh, patrons, a history of the culture war at wars. Um, and I want to play a little bit of that um, just to kind of like to see how a Marxist <laughs> um, describes mm-hmm. uh, CRT here um, before we hear how Chris Rufo describes it. Um, and then how I got in a fight with an Atlantic, um, which I, I mean, I totally crushed this Atlantic guy, but we'll get to <laughs> that dweeb later. Um, <laughs> Here's, uh, here's Andrew Hartman. Well, critical race theory um, emerged, uh, you know, I, when I think of some of its foundational thinkers, like take, for example, Derek Bell, he was a law professor, a uh, black law professor. Um, and kind of his main idea, and he's writing this while he's a professor at Harvard and really the only black professor in the Harvard Law School, um, and so he's writing it in the con- in the context of him feeling like he's a token, appropriately so. Um, he theorized that um, after the civil rights movement and after the sort of great great legislative achievements of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of sixty four and sixty five, um, how do we think about the fact that any inequ- racial inequality in, across all these levels persists? Um, and his main way of thinking about it is that. Um, there's a sort of like built in institutional racism in nominally liberal or colorblind institutions in particular. And he focused mostly on the justice system, but you could apply this to like the educational system or really any, any system across American history or institution that on the face of it is meritocratic, right? Or based in colorblind or universal values. Mm -hmm. We all know, I think that that's a crock of shit, but for um, Derek Bell, he sort of spelled that out in ways, and, and, and then others built upon this in ways that sort of elaborated on the fact that, um, you know, racism was institutional or internal to these systems, right? Um, that's critical race theory in a nutshell. It's just sort of like gives people an approach to think about um, institutions, in particular legal institutions, but, but um yeah, obviously it 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 uh, has it carries weight for conservatives because it, it, the problem is like and you know there's the critiques of it not being rad- revolutionary right, critical race theory right but also yeah. what the problem it presents for conservatives is it conservatives just want to naturalize the hierarchies right and there's a natural reason for all these things and critical race theory is just a tool for mm-hmm. understanding that these isn't just natural yeah um, you know they liken it to Marxism all right, all right that's enough of a free um, uh, there but but that that it's I, I wanted that point about how they liken it to Marxism because I think that's really important for understanding what is exactly going on now, which is a massive reactionary ideological discipline project complete with uh, major party backing. There's eight states that have passed anti-CRT laws. And when I say anti-CRT, it's only Idaho who has explicitly mentioned CRT. The rest are just saying mm-hmm. you can't teach about oppression, privilege, um, or these... F- I mean, it, they literally... Let me put up this... They literally st- state of emergency documents uh, here. This one's from Idaho. Um, and it literally like, l- just read this shit. It, 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 um, um, yeah, see it. I'll uh, zoom in a little or make it a little bit tighter here. Um, but, uh, and it's a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I can, um, relating to dignity and non-discrimination in public education, amending blah, blah, blah. And it says, um, uh, to prohibit the expenditure of monies for certain purposes, prohibiting severability and declaring an emergency. This is an emergency de- declaration saying you can't teach certain tenets of blah, blah, blah. And it's very ob- obscure in language about what it means. But it means this sort of like you can't teach the history of oppression uh, and these sorts of things. And they 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 don't mean Robin DiAngelo. I, I like they mean like and, and here's Chris Rufo himself. If you don't believe me that this is mm-hmm. this is a, a threat to the left. Here is uh, Chris Rufo just uh, four days ago. 
um, on Twitter saying, the Washington Post has published 10 articles attacking my work and playing language games with critical race theory, but they cannot hide the truth. CRT is a reductive neo-Marxist ideology that seeks to, to divide us into oppressor oppressed, then subvert the constitution. So of course we know it's, as we just saw, it's not a neo-Marxist um, uh, ideology. It's just one that looks at a given hierarchy and says, hey, maybe this wasn't uh, determined by God or the constitution or whatever the fuck. Maybe this was, well, I mean, maybe it was, uh, I guess it was determined by the constitution would be the answer there is our, our document. We can, we use uh, policy to create race, uh, uh, racial oppression. Go on, David. Oh, I mean, I just wanted to add to the neo-Marxist claim it's just so funny like the the ideology that they're trying to describe there as if it's like a, a unique formulation in marxism which again it's not really that formulation of marxism of just like a generalized like good versus evil oppressed versus you know oppressors um, right. that's actually like those are like old old uh, kind of philosophical tenets or ideas of like good versus evil right and it just i don't know it's just funny how like marxism always gets wrapped up in these things um even though it has very little necessarily to, to do with them anytime there's anything that they can frame in a way that it's like good versus bad press versus oppressive. yeah like oh that's marxism marx right? Which is just hilarious to me marx objectively has a nuanced take about capitalism right yeah like it isn't this it isn't that it's good not just thing. god versus sin right <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean it's like that's the thing that's so funny i don't mean to derail it with it but it's just amazing how they're able to lump all of that stuff uh, together yeah and so like um We'll ban discussion that the U.S. is inherently racist, uh, as well as discussions of bias, privilege, discrimination, oppression. Gender is included in this as well. Um, Montana and South Dakota state actors have denounced CRT. State school boards in Florida, Georgia, Utah, uh, Oklahoma have introduced new guidelines. And 20 additional states have introduced or planned to introduce similar legislation. And mm. so I got into a fight with um, a guy named Connor Friedersdorf. Um, Friedersdorf, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Um, no, I think, no, you're right. You're right. Friedersdorf. Yeah, I mean, it's not that significant. I mean, I wasn't, I got into this fight with Friedersdorf. I was aiming for Rufo. Um, but. Um, you caught him in your nets. Yeah, here's uh, here's this question posed by Friedersdorf. And actually, let me just give my perception of Friedersdorf so you understand why I come at him with such disrespect, <laughs> which is that when you think of our, our we occasionally do the bum steer segment. Mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. like that certain people uh, direct people towards outlets that are not going to be good for them. Connor Friersdorf wrote a whole bunch of articles for the Atlantic um, about what does this Jordan Peterson thing mean? Let's really think about, Oh, look at all this thing. And look, the, uh, there is some, we talked about it was with Ben Burgess and Michael that the, his, his melding of Jungian with um, sort of a religious um uh, sort of tenor it makes sense why that's popular but you know what really made jordan pearson take off when he did this false martyr act about you know not wanting to call trans people by the preferred pronouns that yep. uh, like is and then he ended up writing alexander solzhenitsyn preface because of that shit um <laughs> and 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 so connor's friedersdorf is the type of guy who exists to make sure Jordan Peterson can write that preface. He, yeah. he, he laundered him into this mainstream for all the talk that these guys are censored. Ben Shapiro is a cool kid's philosopher from the New York Times. Um, Jordan Peterson, it's, we have to, it's this inscrutable thing where you have to zoom in on this Channel 4 appearance where a lady didn't handle him well. Or then you zoom in on this thing he had about at the Aspen Ideas Festival where he talked about the new Gutenberg revolution. And it's like, no, his, he's, he's popular because of the stand against trans people. Um, go. And I, I just want to add about Connor in general, and I, I, I might get into his stuff on CRT in a little bit, so I don't want to jump ahead. Um, but, you know, before even the Jordan Peterson stuff, this is one of the first people to be like, oh, the, the woke mob is coming for you. I mean, like right when the kind of fear mongering first started to begin, like 2014, 2015, Connor is sort of like the 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 right wing whisperer to like, you know, the upper middle class liberals who read the Atlantic. Right. So like, oh, well, you see this kind of unhinged conservative right wing movement. Yeah, there's a lot of them are crazy, but actually deep down there is a lot of truth to it and if we could just you know be discoursing on this level um then we could actually be having interesting discussions about these things and anyways i just want to bring that yeah, up yeah. one because people should know about his history and two it's so funny in your little interaction um with him 
uh, it's it's constantly you know about the tone, right? Oh yes, exactly. Tone's bad, and oh, so now you don't understand the actual fundamental arguments. And we'll get into his his piece that he cited there, which I think is very. Uh, telling us to the kind of arguments that he likes to make. That's exactly what bugs me about him, though, is he tries to act arm's length about this stuff when he's really mm -hmm. an active participant. He literally says, like, this is Barry Weiss's beat. And as David says, like, motherfucker, you've been squatting this beat for as long as anyone can remember. You're not this <laughs> objective sort of idea geologist that is, like, <laughs> randomly picking up ideas and inspecting them. No, you pick up all this shit every time. You pick up the turds and try to force yeah, exactly. it to us. <laughs> like, um, and, okay, so let's let's put up this uh this exchange between Friedersdorf and Rufo and and Friedersdorf wanted me to like read his piece about CRT and I about how both sides are doing it wrong or whatever and I just don't give a fuck and I, uh, but actually no how one side is actually doing it right and that's North Carolina we'll get to that in a second oh interesting <laughs> okay. yeah it's it's a little crazier than you think so uh, Connor says, question for critics of left identitarian approach uh, to teaching about race in America. If the curriculum were up to you, what's your vision of what kids should be taught about race in America? Rufo, of course, replies, because <laughs> I imagine these people talk in private. Um, teach honestly about uh, the history of racism and injustice. Very good. Okay, interesting, Chris. But place it in the context of America's highest ideals and our steady progress towards achieving them. So steady. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's it, right? Like, we do, we don't need to. Well, we will go further, but that's the demand for a fairy tale narrative that is just that's, not coherent to history. That's the lie that conservatives and a lot of liberals push: is that while things are bad, we're always moving in the same direction, and that's frankly untrue. From any subject that you want to pick, workers' rights, there were periods of time where workers had way stronger protections than they do now, right? And obviously what they're talking about there is, you know, race and capitalism in American society. And you should read a, a book by a friend of ours, Matt Carp, This Vast Southern Empire, will show you very clearly that this kind of idea that like, okay, well, there's the founding and they're really racist and bad then, but then over time, you know, things change a little bit. And people start arguing about it and thinking about it. And people realize, okay, it's time to actually enact the ideas. And then we have the Civil War. It's like, no, like slavery as an institution got so much deeper into American society, so much more brutal, so much more extractive, and so much more horrific over time. Right. Yes. I, what I'm trying to say here is like this kind of like idea that, um, you know, everything is just sort of slowly building upon each generation into like freedom is BS. Um, there are, I mean, American history is filled with examples of hyper reaction. So I'm sorry, like, like if I were just a history teacher to teach American history in that way, it would be malpractice to teach people that. Yeah, I mean, so and this is why it's like six. They, these guys make a whole bunch of hay about the 1619 project. But this is the problem with the 1619 project is when you it, it collapses that sort of possibility yeah. of retrenchment like if you place those first africans as slaves and not indentured as they were um then it seems like it has been somewhat of a linear march a steady mm -hmm. steady but too slow march toward progress so rufo is agreed basically with the 1619 project here um and in a way like the worst the worst parts of this um and again, like I think the anti CRT stuff is the thing to emphasize when it comes to uh, uh, McCarthyite. Mm. But the worst parts of the CRT stuff are all like symbiotic with Rufo in this in this sort of way. But uh, let me uh, let's go back to this tweet and go a little bit more yeah. in depth. Um, so teach honestly about the racism and and our steady progress. Again, like the like, man, um, we're just chugging up, you know, the hill. We're just riding out the stall. Yeah, uh, cultivate is set. yeah exactly. I mean, you look at like climate change and like like just divorces from yeah. racial topics like our wages, um, and also uh, well, I make this point later, so I won't I won't preview it. And then so Connor, oh Connor has to pick this guy's brain because he's such a fucking intellectual. So Connor, just like super interested guy. Um, what about present day racial inequality where the causes are widely contested by a lot of factions? Mm. How should schools handle say the fact that racial disparities in mass incarceration? Uh, or, or say the fact of racial disparities in mass incarceration, teaching the debate, which I like that. I was unable to ever spell out what that means, but Connor's followers think that's basically forcing soul onto sixth graders. Uh, Thomas Sowell, the um, the sort of black uh, yeah, it's culture, 
yeah right it's like what the thing is it's like this is old school like american conservative nonsense that the reason that you have like you know uh, a, a lot of deter like if you look at american statistics on incarceration poverty health um you know these and education achievement and things like that these things can be explained by um certain racial groups having a bad culture yeah and exactly not practicing for example marriage right exactly like, those are the factions um, that's why that's why Saul gets paid by the Hoover Institution. I mean, and um, so here's Chris Rufo's response. Public K through 12 schools should be careful how they teach current events. I know because they might be fucking under penalty of law, Chris, because of you, um, which can be heavily politicized. Yeah, fucking tell me about it. People think um, I can't remember what novel it is. I'll have to go back. Um, but it was an example of early CRT, um, like <laughs> like To Kill a Mockingbird. Um um, but if a high school wants to teach something like discrimination and disparities, it should provide the best work from multiple perspectives and then encourage the debate. Now, again, I think that is complete like that sounds great in theory. They don't mean like the um, uh, race craft. <laughs> um, they mm -hmm. don't mean that they, they mean Thomas Sowell. And so anyway, who um, for people who are, are not familiar is honestly an extremely comical um, right winger is one of the the great ones who uh, you know was a socialist in his youth, but then he saw the light, uh, mainly some checks uh, <laughs> later later in life, and and uh, is somebody who makes these kind of cultural arguments, right? And it's like personal motivation or what you know, lack of personal motivation or what create poverty, lack of having you know father figures in your life and what creates poverty, all this kind of you know really boring but all like uh, conservative nonsense. But I don't mean to take away from the exciting Matt Leck threads here. Um, no, I think honestly. Um, no, because you have some good ones in here. Do I? I think okay. it's worth exploring. Um, I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. It was respond to this one. He just wanted my clown tweet because. Um... <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so I said, hilarious how we have to overlook everything in history, which would make a normal person question, quote, steady progress and then act like critical race theory is apocalyptic. And then I said, at Connor and at real Chris Rufo again. Real Chris Rufo is the person I was trying to uh, to get in a fight with. Uh, we see you, clowns. Mm. Uh, this morning I woke up to this. Hi, Matt. I don't typically respond to argument by emoji, but I wonder what. Uh, but I wonder if you can point to any specific instance where I've treated CRT as though it is apocalyptic. I said, happy to amend to just yakking. Uh, slash picking the brain of a guy <laughs> who is pushing it as a social crisis if you want to stick to defending that steady progress myth and can explain how you teach racial disparities without politics. And uh, this is all his responses. So that's why it gets kind of boring. It says, you're mischaracterizing yeah. my position again. Again, that's, as I say, that's easy to say. Um, <laughs> Which I thought was a good one. Yeah. Um, he says, this is my position. What passage is consistent with your characterizations? Which is, again, like these... When I have to do fucking homework to see that you're not a dumbass, um, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, so I said, I was characterizing your public Twitter exchange with the main figure leading a panic. I stopped reading yeah. your articles after multiple navigating, naval gazing pieces getting to the bottom of and definitely not promoting Jordan Peterson. And then he says, well, if you did the reading, which again, like I'm not going, I don't, I don't, yeah. I reject the idea I should. Um, you'd see that I'm, you'd quickly see that you are mischaracterizing my position and perhaps reflect on the ways your uncharitable comportment, the ways this is the, I like this part, the ways your uncharitable comportment make your commentary more dumb and ill-informed than necessary. I mean, it doesn't say it's completely dumb. It's just more dumb than necessary. But I, I included this. What I'm hearing is you don't want to defend what you were in agreement with Rufo out in the thread. This is the fruit of your chari charitable comportment toward reactionaries. Do you claim it? So here's a reply to connor which exactly illustrates my point i interpret this the exact same way that no try equals no fail at still tr 0520738 interprets it who is a fan mm -hmm. of connor which is that he's demanding people like soul this is the controversy right the controversy is in racial disparities and mass incarceration is did black people do this to themselves with their culture or their biology, or was this done through policy and uh, a disproportionate and unequal distribution of resources? And the answer is obvious. There's no, there's no controversy about that. There is, this is not like, I honestly, like this is this one step removed from Charles Murray shit. And then we're supposed mm. to like be like, we're supposed to have a charitable comportment to this shit. Well, I'm never going to. I'm never going to have a charitable compartment to Connor. Well, nor should you. I mean, 